All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another little interview show here. I'm having a ton of fun with these. And I'm just absolutely friggin' ecstatic on this guest. Um, I'm literally jumping out of my seat right now. Before we started recording this, Travis hopped on and I was like dancing to music and stuff. I was just uh, having a great time. Um, this is Travis Trapple, everybody. He's a good friend of mine. You probably have heard that name before if you listen to a number of different podcasts. And if you love podcasts, you have to check his out because this is what he does. Uh, he has a podcast called Build Your Network. Uh, so he is a absolute badass at podcasting, um, a badass at networking, sales. Um, and oh yeah, by the way, you are a reinvestor as well. Um, and recent father, congratulations. Thanks, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on too, by the way. I uh, appreciate, the, appreciate the opportunity to share some information. Yeah, uh, we, we did a brief little discussion on what we want to kind of talk, uh, what we want to talk today about. And uh, you were previously on the Bigger Pockets show. Um, I think you guys did back to back interviews. You interviewed Brandon and then Brandon interviewed you or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I actually saw Brandon comment on one of the postings about your podcast that it was one of the best valuable podcasts ever on the Bigger Pockets platform. Yeah, which was crazy to hear. Because <laughs> yeah. I've been like huge fans of BP since day one. Right. Yeah, for a long time, man. Yeah, seriously, it was it was crazy when I, when he said that. Yeah, I was like, what? Really? <laughs> I was nervous that I was gonna suck. So, thank awesome. you. <laughs> it was the best. Uh, two, you know, three twenty three. I think was the BP show. Uh, so go back and I can include that into some of the links here. But um, for anybody who doesn't know you already. Um, you know, everybody can see that your name is Travis Trappel from your little mic set there. You got this uh, pretty badass little setup. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are and what the uh, Build Your Network uh, deal is all about. Yeah, so uh, basically I was always had that entrepreneurial itch. Um, I don't know exactly how to describe it except for maybe the desire to make money combined with the maybe inability to listen to authority. Uh, so, uh, you know, th that was just kind of how I was always wired. And uh, like I was the kid in elementary school, bringing little things to school to sell to all the other kids at elementary school, you know? Um, and then in high school, I started my first, you know, business, quote unquote business. I mean, like we, it's not like we were raking in the dough or anything, but my buddy of mine and, and I started a, um, a landscaping company and started just mowing lawns and putting in sod and grass and sprinklers and fixing stuff and all that kind of stuff. And that was like my first real business <clears throat> that, that I jumped into. And I learned a couple of really valuable lessons there. One of them being the value of, of selling and the value of creating the customer relationship. Um, and, uh, I remember we started at the summer before my senior year of high school and we, uh, right before we got into school that year, um, I had sold two sod jobs, like probably two weeks, uh, maybe a week before school started back up. So the rest of the summer, we had just been selling jobs and then doing the labor on the jobs. Like we didn't hire anybody. We'd made the most you know money that we could. And then we got in school and, uh, just couldn't literally couldn't do the labor on, on the job just cause you know, we're, school eight hours plus like football practice other extra curriculars that we had so we had to go hire people so i remember going and hiring local college students to go do the manual labor on the jobs that i had sold before i got back to school and um i remember sitting in class one day obviously not paying attention to what the teacher was saying and like doing the math on the on the two jobs and i remember figuring out that i was actually going to make more money than the people that we were paying to do the manual labor on the jobs. Um, and I would, it was just like a huge aha moment for me. It was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I'm literally doing nothing. I'm sitting in class right now and they are out there like working in the sun and I'm going to make more money than they are. Like, why wasn't I doing this all summer? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why wasn't I just like hiring people and just selling more jobs? And uh, that was really like one of the first big lessons where I experienced the power of creating customer relationships and how much more valuable um, to the you know machine that that particular activity was, and uh, and so that was kind of like my first stint into into that business world. And then in college, um, a buddy of mine started in door to door sales, and uh, he had made some decent money doing it. He showed me his pink deck one week. And, it was enough to intrigue me. I asked him to get me an interview with the supervisor and then um, got the job and started door knocking that next week, got promoted within like three days and got promoted again within about six weeks and then 
Um, within about two months, I had my own team. And then about six months, I was running 20 guys and we're the top producing team in that whole region, which was the top producing region in the second highest producing solar company in the country at the time. So we were just like rolling through. And um, I remember just like being stoked out of my mind because I was like 20, you know, 19, 20 years old. Um, had a bunch of my friends working for me. We worked 20 hour work weeks. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't killing. I wasn't making like crazy good money, but for a 19 year old, I was making like 1500 or so dollars a week, you know? So like, making, you know, like for what I, you know, for what I knew, I was like, damn, this is like some good, you know, this is good income. Like this is pretty fun. And, uh, so I eventually basically got out of that. And, um, uh, when I moved, so I moved up from LA area up to central California and got recruited out of solar and started doing door to door alarms. That was the first time I'd ever make six figures knocking doors was when I started in the alarm industry and then got recruited into water purification. And around that same time, <clears throat> I just kind of had a, a crisis of like a quarter, like a uh, crisis trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. Um, because I never really got the opportunity to figure that out growing up. I grew up in a really religious type of a bubble. And so the decision was kind of made for me on what I was going to do with my life by the, from the time that I was like 11 years old. And so I never had that 14, 15, 16 year old phase of like, Hey, what do I want to do with my life? So, um, after doing door to door for a couple of years, I realized I didn't really want to do that. I wasn't going to go into ministry like I originally thought either. So I knew that I wasn't going to do two things, but I didn't know what I was going to do after that. So for the first time in my life, bro, I jumped into personal development like crazy and just consumed as much content as I possibly could. And uh, that's when I came across podcasting, came across a guy named John Lee Dumas. Um, and I was just super impressed with everything that he had done. And I craved the lifestyle that he had built for himself. And, uh, so I jumped into podcasting and so now basically I am a podcaster and there's been real estate investing throughout that entire journey just cause my, my dad has been a real estate agent since I was, I was, since I was like three or four. Um, so, you know, I was walking properties from the time I was in elementary school, you know, it was just kind of part of what, well, part of what I did. So when, whenever I'd make money, um, in door to door, I would, you know, talk to my dad and we would go in on a deal together and flip a house or two and stuff like that. So real estate investing was always just like a part of what I do just because I'm so intertwined in that world. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the journey leading up to now. Yeah, man. Like I got so much just respect and admiration for your, your, your whole journey. And, you know, for people who again, don't know who you are quite yet. Um, you've had some absolute badasses on your show so far. Is there a couple that stand out that might be relevant for like our audience, which is, you know, real estate based? Yeah. You know, uh, for a generic business, I mean, it's not super generic. It's called build your network. It's mostly about networking, but for a show that I, I guess for a business show, that's not about real estate, I have a good amount of real estate people on just because it's like, like I said, it's in my blood, like I can't help it. And I, and I love the industry so much. So, um, the, yeah, there's, there's quite a few men. Um, the, some of the bigger well-known people would be like Cole Hatter, Grant Cardone, you know, Brandon Turner, um, guys like that. And then, um, some of the more low key guys, um, are still doing some crazy things. I had a guy on named Jefferson Lilly. He runs a, um, a mobile home park syndicate and uh, they have like over 50 million in, in in like assets under management right now um, with just mobile home parks across the U S which I thought was a really cool one. Their returns are crazy good too. Um, and then um, talked to the guy recently um, named Mark Masia and he is doing these huge real estate development deals, like nine figure real estate development deals out in like the New York area using like family money, like the, like these families that have a ton of money and just have hundreds of millions of dollars under management. Like he'll pitch them, use their money, develop like giant buildings and stuff like that. So um, yeah, there's some really interesting guys on the show, like from like anywhere, everywhere in between. I got a guy um, who's actually going to be speaking at my event in November. Um, who's a Vegas local and his name is Luke and he's doing, his company does 300 flips a year, which wow. is like more than anybody I've ever come across. Like even the badass flippers that I know, like they're doing like 10, 12, you know what I mean? This dude's doing 300. So, um, yeah, people like that, man, there's a lot of low key dudes out there just crushing the real estate game. And, um, I try to get a lot of those people on my show just cause I really enjoy the conversations. Yeah. And like, I love your show, not only for that reason, obviously I got benefits with, with real estate content, but you know, you've had a ton of guests that, uh, you know, everything, every show you've done, I think I've gotten just a little nugget of, um, whether I can implement that in my personal life or into my business life. So I highly encourage you guys to go listen to build your network subscribe to that because it's freaking phenomenal. Um, now you mentioned your, your upcoming event in November. Uh, I was a part of your mastermind back in March 
And it was absolutely life changing for me, dude. Um, it was a five day kind of intensive mastermind in Thailand. You know, uh, the two of us and a couple other buddies, we went for a bit of a, um, you know, a wild goose chase right before, <laughs> right before the actual mastermind and just explore some Thailand fun. Yeah. Uh, but the event itself was probably one of the best, if not the best five day mastermind that I've ever been a part of. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Uh, oh, dude, thank you for putting it on. Um, it was, it was so impactful for everybody that went. Um, and was, you know, it built some really close relationships, um, you know, built, you know, our friendship a lot deeper and everybody else, I think it was like 25 or 20 people that were there and, and it was just really phenomenal. So what have you got happening in, in November? What's going on there? Yeah. So first off, thanks for saying that. Um, uh, it's so funny. Like when you, when you try to do some of these things, like initially you, you always go through that imposter syndrome phase of like, well, we'll try this out, <laughs> like see how it goes, you know? Um, so when it goes well, like one of those events, like uh, I'm always super grateful to hear feedback on stuff like that because you just never know, you know what I mean? You're just throwing it together, doing your best and like hoping that it's going to go well and people are going to get something from it. So I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that it went well for you. Um, so the event in November is, um, more like a live event type of a feel. Um, but you know me, bro, like I'm always trying to do things differently than most people. So, um, I, I'm going to try to limit the audience size and then I'm going to try to make it more focused on connection. That's the biggest thing for me is that I go to a lot of events and you do too, Steve. And, um, there's so many that are just packed full of content. It's just content, 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 like a nine hour marathon of just sitting in a chair and binging content. <laughs> like, look, I, I don't have a, like necessarily a problem with it. I think that it has its place, but for the most part, like, Here's what I think. I think that if you're running, if you're leaving an event with 15 pages full of notes on content instead of like 15 contacts, I think that you're there for the wrong reasons and that you're missing the point. Um, all of these people share content on stages all across the world. They have content on YouTube, on podcasts, on books, eBooks, newsletters, like everywhere. You can get this content anywhere. Now there is something special about going in person and getting the content in person. Like this is always going to be a better experience. Um, but when you leave an event with more than two or three things to implement, it's just like information overload and you're probably just going to sit there stale and not actually do anything. So I tell people the number one reason to go to events is for connection. Connections first content is actually number three. And number two is to watch expert communicators in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So um, I think communication is so huge. So I put it as connection, communicators, content. Like those are like in a row, those three things. Um, so my event's going to be really geared toward the connection piece, like getting people at the event to connect with each other, allowing the people at the event to connect with the speakers, um, just stuff like that. Just making it more connection focused, um, rather than just another conference where you go get a ton of content and then leave and don't implement anything. Yeah. I love that model too, dude. Like that's what we did in Thailand and yeah. relationships that you build, you know, like you said, if you, if it was strictly just content for three days, you're going to walk away with a hundred different things you want to implement and you're not going to implement any because you're focusing on a hundred different things. You know, maybe it's smart. You choose two or three things to implement immediately and a couple of things to implement down the road and actually execute on those. That's great. But the cool thing when you're making connections uh, and building relationships is you can get all that content later when you actually need it because you become buddies or business associates or really close friends with the relationships that are still in the room. Mm -hmm. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. That's, that's the main goal, man. Like you got to, you know, I, I felt like there was pretty good content in Thailand, but ultimately like we remember the friendships, right? Like remember the memories, the relationships, the experiences, like, and that's ultimately what creates like real relationships yeah. is memories and experiences that you create together. And, uh, being at an event and handing me a business card doesn't create a memorable experience for me to like create a relationship with you going forward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like if you're at an event and you're, you know, forced to work together to do something, you know, like solve a puzzle or something like that. And you have to work collaboratively with people you never met before. Like it's a good way to like break the ice and get people to actually connect and like get to know each other rather than just like, Oh, here's my business card. Can I have your business card? Oh, we shouldn't like, we're not in similar industries. We can do business. Therefore, like we don't need this connection. I'm going to talk to somebody that can profit, you know, my bank account tomorrow. You know what I mean? It's just like across this disingenuous, um, desire to connect with money rather than a genuine desire to connect with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. So this event is, is uh, in Vegas where you're at? Yep. Yeah, it's going to be out here in Las Vegas. Um, again, you know me, try to make things unique. So 
We're not doing like a typical hotel conference room type thing where you don't even know what time of day it is because you haven't seen the light in nine hours. <laughs> uh, we're doing, uh, we rented out the whole first floor of Top Golf out here in Vegas. <laughs> And, um, so yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a great time, man. And the first full, uh, first full day. So the event is November 8th through 10th. The first full day is an entire day just for VIP ticket holders. So one of my biggest pet peeves of events too, is when I go and I fork out the extra cash for the VIP ticket and they basically give you like a stale hotel lunch and like a notebook and say, Oh yeah, you get to, you know, get early seating or whatever. And it's like, okay, so I paid an extra $900 on a like $300 ticket to get a nasty lunch and like a speaker lunch where like one speaker's actually there and they leave after 20 minutes. Like that, that's not exactly what I signed up for, you know? So, um, I try to make sure that anytime anybody invests with me that they always get, um, more value than they pay for. And the VIP experience is definitely going to be that it's like the first full day to all of November 8th is just for VIP ticket holders. So there'll be a workshop, um, at a awesome location here in Las Vegas. Um, I keep going back and forth on telling people where it's going to be because I kind of want it to be a surprise because it's a really cool place. Um, and, uh, and we'll have like our own, you know, workshops and different things like that happening the first day. Um, by the time the second day hits, like, everybody that wasn't VIP is going to be wishing that they were VIP. Like it's like this day two, all the VIP ticket holders are going to know each other. They're going to have already previous relationships and everybody that's going to be there new the second day and not know those people and uh, feel like they missed out on things. And they definitely will because the VIP tickets are definitely going to get a completely different experience. But I mean, if you can't afford that general mission is still going to be really awesome. The ninth and 10th is still going to be like, jam packed, value packed, full of amazing experiences and opportunities to connect with awesome people. So, um, super small, intimate event, like no more than a hundred people. Probably uh, I'm thinking about capping it off around 75 or so, to be honest. Um, I want it just to be super like small, close knit group of intimate, um, connection with everybody that's there. Yeah, that's wicked. I'll include some more details or link or something in the, in the post here. So you guys can click on that and find, you know, obviously your podcast, you know, more about this event. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a by it's it's at bynlive.com. BYN so Live. yeah, there's the event's called Build Your Network Live. So you can go to bynlive.com or buildyournetworklive.com. Both of the URLs work. Sick. Cool. Let's hop into some networking. Um Let's do it. Still about networking. You yourself are a badass networker. You know, all of your guests, I'm sure, have uh excelled in networking and so why networking is important for us as real, uh, real estate investors is a couple different reasons. Uh, one, you know, if you're going to a meetup, um, you want to be able to connect with a couple different people. You want to connect with the host because they're the one running the show. You want to connect with the guest speakers because they're typically the professional in, in the space and people who, um, you know, everybody wants to meet with. And then you want to kind of stand out with them versus the rest of the crowd. And you want to connect with all the audiences there because you never know who's going to be sitting on your left or your right. It could be a money partner for you. It could be selling somebody, somebody selling a, a hot deal that you can capitalize on, uh, or it could just be somebody that um, you know you can you can learn from. Mm -hmm. And so, what's a couple of quick little awesome tips uh, for people who are a little bit more introverted uh, for when they're going to live events, whether it be you know your type of an event or a meetup like ours, um, or, or any kind of live event? Um, yeah, just get plastered. <laughs> <laughs> You'll, you'll be good to go. You'll, you'll forget that you're an introvert really quickly. Oh, okay. yeah. That's it. Yeah, man, that's tough. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty introverted person myself. So, um, that's all stuff that I had to really work through. The biggest thing is positioning. Like the number one thing, if you can master your positioning, then your networking will take off. So, um, now I try to go to events where I already know people. Um, if you don't know people, try to connect with people beforehand. Um, position yourself in a way that gets people to want to connect with you rather than you trying to go connect with everybody else. Um, the main way that I've done that is through my podcast um, and like through the podcast, being able to get the type of guests that I have on. Now my online presence is my business card for me. Like when I go in um, to an event, like it's so funny, bro, because people will visibly like change their demeanor when after I connect with them, like on Instagram or something like that we've been talking for three minutes then we connect on Instagram and they go check out my Instagram and like they literally treat me differently after they see like what 
what the podcast is. And um, it acts as like a, a business card brand builder, but without me having to be the douchebag that's like, oh yeah, I do this, that, and blah, blah, and become the me monster at the party, right? Like nobody likes that guy. So you don't want to become that person, but you want to have other things do the talking for you, especially as an introvert, because you feel like, you already feel awkward talking to other people, but let alone talking to other people about yourself. Like you don't really want to do those things. So your positioning coming into the event, I think is super important. Um, position yourself in a way where people want to connect with you. If you don't have time or, you know, for whatever reason, maybe you're starting completely from scratch, just like I was a couple of years ago. Um, one huge tip for me is um, you have to figure out ways as an introvert to conserve your energy at an event. Um, you can rest when you get home. Events are not for sleeping. Events are for getting out and meeting people and making the most of the time that you have while you're there. Um, so when you get out to, to these events, something I do to try to conserve energy as an introvert is I try to have people like, um, um, start conversations with me rather than me having to worry about starting conversations with other people. Main way that I do that is through positioning. But if you're not doing that, if you can't do that or whatever, um, uh, maybe the event's coming up next week and you need some practical tips right now because you didn't plan for it or whatever. Um, one big thing is stand in high traffic areas and have open body language. Um, and um, this is something this is something that uh, that I still do to this day. If I'm at an event that um, you know I haven't positioned myself properly in, um, I'll just stand in a high traffic area. So a lot of times that's going to be the bar. You know, like if you're at a, a networking event and there's a bar there, people are getting going up, getting drinks or whatever. Um, stand right by the bar until you make eye contact with somebody, and uh, most of the time, other people will initiate that conversation. If you're just kind of if you're standing there with like your arms crossed and like you're looking at your drink, then they're just going to think that you're depressed and are like drinking your sorrows away. Right. But you stand at the bar and instead of sitting down, you're standing up, you have your body language turned open toward the room and like you're sipping, but looking to make eye contact with people. Most of the time, other people will start the conversation with you. Um, and, um, it's not weird because you're at an event where you're supposed to talk to people. So, uh, but doing something like that, saves me energy from being that awkward guy that inserts themselves into a circle that's already formed and it's like, Hey, what's up guys? And it's like, Hey, and you awkwardly think that they're already friends with one of the other four people in the circle, you know, cause like there's no way they could be this friendly to a bunch of strangers, but then they, they actually are that way. Like, like I'm just not the person that's going to be able to like that, that does that well. Cause I'm an introverted person by nature. So you'll just come across super not genuine and I really believe in being yourself. And so um, I just figure out ways to try to make people connect with me instead of me having to cons um, use my energy to try to connect with other people. That's an awesome tip. And just to rewind like 10 seconds, it is so important to just be yourself. And yes, you want to challenge yourself if you're an introvert, you know, get out to more, um, more networking events and practice, right? Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people can tell when you're not being yourself. So if you're an introvert, play the introvert job. If you're an extrovert, be an extrovert. You know, a lot of people, if you're an extrovert, um, you know, half the room is going to be the opposite of you. So if you come in all aggressive and hot, like they're going to com get completely standoffish. Mm -hmm. So if you're an extrovert, you also have to, you have to take that into account and just kind of like tone it down just a wee bit. Yeah. You know, I've, I've done, which, which you're uncomfortable with many friggin' times, you know, I've been to trade shows that were 45,000 people plus. Wow. Yeah. And I got no issue walking into a circle of six or 10 or whatever and being like, Hey guys, what's up? I'm Steve. You know, <laughs> what are you doing here? What's up? <laughs> and, uh, you know, but when I'm approaching somebody on their own or a smaller group of two or three, I don't know if they're going to be extroverted or introverted. So I'm going to walk in there with a little bit more sensitivity and, you know, a little bit calmer, more quiet demeanor. Yeah, so, for sure. A little bit of both, but there's, there's strategies you can do for either. You just got to figure out if you're the in, uh, introvert or the extrovert. Definitely. Yeah. And if you're the one, the one challenge I have for extroverts is try not to go meet everybody in the room. Yeah. Introverts, you don't have to tell them that. Extroverts, <laughs> you don't have to tell them that. You know what I mean? Like I, the, it's funny because now that I've been doing this for a long time, I've found that the best networkers that I know are actually introverts um, because they tend to go deep with a few people instead of really, really shallow with a bunch of people. Yeah. So extroverts are seemingly better networkers, but for the majority of people that I know that are really good at, they're actually more introverted by nature because when they actually make connections, that connection goes deep and they make a real friendship. So my biggest challenge to extroverts is to like, make sure you lean into who you are. I'm not telling you to change who you are, but also be mindful that 
you that as an extrovert you might have you might have a tendency to treat a person as a number rather than a human being mm -hmm. um just just by nature that's just how extroverts tend to be um, so that's the where they're all about numbers right mm -hmm. right business cards did he get in right. that conference or trade show or yep or exactly um, so the other aspect of, of how networking plays into, you know, us as real estate investors, I'm going to kind of play back to our model, which is our, our local, um, you know, monthly real estate investing educational meetups here in Victoria, BC, um, which we're hopefully spreading over to Vancouver soon, PS. Um, and so what we do is, you know, we'll have a, a kazoon type, bro, uh, or whatever you do for coughs. <laughs> Our format is like half hours of networking before we get started and we do like an hour or two of content where like uh, myself and or Randy will do a presentation and then our guest speaker will do a presentation and then we'll do some group Q&A and then some, you know, leave it um, for more networking at the end. And when we bring in our sponsors, when we bring in guest speakers, um, and when I've gone to trade shows and conferences and stuff in the past, um, I guess I call myself a bit of a big shark hunter. Or big game hunter I'm always looking for how can I connect with like the most important person in the room and why I don't know maybe it's an ego thing um, but I also know that if they're the most important person in the room they're most likely one of the people that I can learn the most from if I can build a relationship with them it's a bit of a challenge for me as well and I kind of like that uh, that thrill um, so when you're going to you know our meetup or other conferences and stuff where there's you know big sharks um, and, and some big names you want to get in front of, what's something that we can do to stand out from everyone else there at the lab event to connect with these you know, real estate professionals or, or badasses at the front of the, from the room? Yeah, so first of all, connect with them beforehand if you can. Um, let them know that, hey, I, I see that you're going to this event. You know, Thrive, you see they're going to be speaking at Thrive this year. I'm going, I bought my VIP ticket. I'm actually, you know, for people like us, like I'm actually in Cole's Mastermind. You know, figure out a couple of ways to connect with them beforehand. Send them an Instagram message. Maybe send them a thank you card in the mail for some of their, um, you know, content that they are creating. Send them a, you know, small gift or something. Get their attention and let them know like, hey, I'm going to be at this event and I'm going to come up to you and I uh, just want to give you a heads up. That way when you go up to them at the event, you can shoot them a quick reminder like, hey, what's up? I'm Travis. I'm, I, I'm the one that sent you that thank you card and said I was going to be coming up to you. I don't know if you got that or not. You know what I mean? And, and like some people might not even remember that they got it. Um, but the people that do remember are going to be like, oh, yeah, thank you so much for that. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Tell me like more about what you do. You know, um, they're going to be really, really open and receptive to that because you made a you made an effort to connect with that individual person because speakers at events don't know sometimes if the person's connecting with them because they actually know them or because they're a speaker. Mm -hmm. Right. So like if you can, if you can be that person that actually knows them, consumes their content, like has been, you know, has a testimonial from something they put out, like stuff like that goes a really, really long way, especially with people like that who are trying to make bigger impact. Yeah. Um, instead of just like, oh, I saw that you're a speaker, so you must be important. Can we get a picture together, I guess? I don't know. Like, uh, I'm, I just might regret it later on if I figure out that you're actually really famous. You know what I mean? Like, that is not the way to do it. So um, connect, try to connect beforehand if you can. Um, that's, that's a huge thing. That's the, another reason why I have a podcast, bro, because it it enables me to connect with people more on their level rather than like the thronging audience member trying to get a picture. Yeah. If that makes sense. Oh, totally. And um, like, like it or not levels do exist and um, people put themselves on different levels by the way that they interact with people on higher levels. And so if you are that person, that's the thronging fan, then you just got put in that bucket in that person's head. Right. And fans aren't business partners, mm -hmm. right? Like they're just not. So, um, I, I try to, I try to do the connection beforehand through like a podcast interview or something that way when I connect them at the event, like I know that they know me, I just talk to them on an interview. Right. So like I can go up to them at that event and say, Hey, what's up? I'm Travis. So we just had a conversation, you know, last week on, on my show. It's like, Oh yeah, great. You know, great to see you or whatever. And then, uh, and then I usually peace out. I'm just like, Hey, I know that you're super busy. You got a lot of other people trying to talk to you, but I just want to come up and say hi, see you later. And yeah. like, I leave the conversation like that, um, which gives them more of like, I don't know, bro. It, it just gives them more of like a, almost like a mutual respect as if like, we're, we're, we're very similar. Like we're the same people, right? Yeah. Like it's almost, it's almost like playing hard to get with a girl. You know what I mean? Like you're, 
you're, you're just, you're, you're being that person that like, Hey, I know you got a bunch of stuff going on. So do I just want to come up and say hi and, um, and make sure that we, we connected in person since we did that zoom interview. But anyway, have a good one. We'll, we'll chat later. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, cool. Because the bottom line is like at an event, it's so hard to make an impression off of just like a cold shaking of the hand because your, your positioning isn't as good as their positioning at that event. So if you meet them at that event and they're a speaker and you're an attendee, like, again, you're going to be put on this bucket. You're going to be put in this bucket um, in their head. Um, and so you might be able to connect to them. They might even remember you, but they're probably not going to partner with you on anything. And they're probably not going to like look to you for, you know, um, peer to peer advice or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just a different, just a different um, relationship you're putting yourself in if you connect with them on their level versus connecting with them as like another fan of theirs at the event. So yeah, yeah those are a couple, couple of like the more like high level tactics that, that I think work really well. Yeah, they absolutely do. I've used them many times. Um, you know, any networking event I go to, I typically do a little bit of research on either who the guest speakers are, who the host is, or who some of the names are that are already saying, you know, that they're attending and that kind of stuff. And yeah. then as that face, um, you know, you have something to say. And, you know, my research is basically just looking for two things. I'm looking for, you know, what they do in their personal life so that I can relate to them. You know, if they like hockey or for you, like if they just had a newborn or something like that, um, or if they're in podcasting or if they're in real estate. And then the other thing I'm looking for is um, someone of value that I can give to them. If they're, if I'm a, you know, real estate expert and they're a realtor, I'd be like, yo, bro, like, we've got an awesome audience that you might want to you know, speak to that kind of stuff. Right. Right. And then if I'm looking to connect with the hosts themselves, something that I always do before events, probably twice, maybe three times before the event is to share that event on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, whatever you think is going to be the most um, effective audience for who you're trying to target and who you're trying to connect with. So if yeah. it's a meetup, for example, you know, share it on Facebook and be like, Hey, super excited, you know, to see Randy and Steve at the reinvestors monthly meetup, you know, their guest speaker this month is, you know, Travis Chapel, And I'm super stoked to see him because, you know, he drops networking bombs left, right, and center. Yeah. And like a couple of times before the event, we're going to notice you're going to notice and other people who are going are going to notice. And so you, um, I'm not a focal point, but a higher focal point than everybody else who's not doing any kind of engagement whatsoever. Right. Yeah. You're higher. Um, you're more recognizable. You know, yeah. that's the bottom line is trying to get people to know who you are. That's, that's really what it comes down to. So, yeah. And, and to point it out, like I do it through my podcast, you do it through your meetup, like speaking at my meetup, you know what I mean? Like I'm so huge on platform, man. Like having a platform is such a huge value add to people. So build a platform like YouTube podcast, meetup, whatever it is, build something. Um, and I promise you like your network will really, really expand much faster that way. Yeah, absolutely. Like we, we took the script from bigger pockets, like page by page, step by step where it's, Hey, how do you get started in real estate investing? Oh, go to a local REI, real estate investing mm -hmm. networking event. Oh, mm -hmm. well, in Victoria, there wasn't any. So what did we do? We took the next step. We actually started one. Right. From that, like we reached out to, all of our current sponsors and other professionals in the space saying like, Hey, we have an audience for you to talk to, to grow your business and promote value to everybody who comes. It's a win-win for everybody. We get associated with the professionals who come and speak. Um, they get a new audience to talk to. And then the audience themselves get to connect with uh, us, get to learn things and get to connect with the professionals of what their desired uh, you know, industry is. Yep. yep. Um, so true. Something that, you know, we do daily, is email introductions, hmm. cold email introductions, right? Um, so if we're moving to a new market, say we're gonna come down to Vegas, but I'm gonna hop on the phone and I'm gonna follow up with an email and I'm gonna do a bunch of cold emails to real estate professionals, agents, brokers, developers, other investors, that kind of stuff. You know, professionals who probably get 10 to 50 to 100 emails every single day. Now on the Bigger Pockets podcast, I heard this, I think it was like five or six step structure to like the perfect cold email intro. And I was like, damn, I do a couple of these just naturally, but there's a couple that I didn't quite have the right sequence to. And I've started doing that since. And I, my, like my response rate has gone through the roof. Um, so hey, awesome, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Two, can you share that with everybody watching this right now? Um, I know you shared it a couple of times on different platforms and other people's podcasts and shows and stuff, but I just thought it was so freaking valuable because especially if you're the introverted side of things, 
where you don't want to hop on the phone a hundred times in a day and in sales get rejected 99. <laughs> Not right. Yeah. Um, if you want to, if you want to go a little bit more of a softer approach, uh, and, and just email, you know, everybody you possibly can, there's a wicked awesome recipe for success. And if you don't mind sharing it, man, I know everybody watching it's going to just. Yeah, man, for sure. For sure. I don't know if you can hear my dog barking by the way. So if you can, I'm sorry about that. Um, it's, it's trash day. So like she's <laughs> at her nemesis, the trash man. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So yeah, man, there's, there's five things like really it's just been put together through a lot of, you know, falling flat on my face and embarrassing myself during the process of trying to get all these people on my show. Cause now we're past 300 episodes as of last week. So nice. um, we're at like episode 303 right now, 304, I think launched today. So, um, just so much content and so many guests that I've, you know, gotten on the show. And so this is, you know, this is like the trial and error of me, like looking back at all my past emails and trying to find the common themes and then like really scripting out and saying, okay, what am I actually doing here? What, like, what, why is this one getting a, a higher response rate versus this other one, you know? And, um, so this is what I come up with and this is like a five step process. I call it five, um, steps to an effective, uh, reach out message. And, uh, I say reach out message cause you use whatever platforms at your disposal. Don't just focus on email. Um, but first off, number one, so I'm just going to go through them and then we'll go talk about them. So it's first off is lead with value. Number two is information. Number three is uh, build a meaningful request. Number four is offer credibility. And number five is thanks in advance. So lead with value. Um, all of networking comes down to value. Uh, 100%. Your network will always increase in direct proportion to the amount of value that you can add to other people. 100%. Um, that's why people with giant platforms have insanely good networks because platforms are such a huge value add to people. That's why Lewis Howes is so, you know, famous for, you know, like he didn't really do anything before being Lewis House. You know what I mean? Like he, he was a LinkedIn trainer, but like, that's really it. You know what I mean? Like, but he's been able to build such a huge platform that now his network is better than most people, you know, that I know. Um, same with my buddy, Jordan Harbinger, same way. Like he built an insanely good platform. So now he can, you know, he just had Howie Mandel on his show last like a couple weeks ago and Chelsea Handler and like he was on Burt Kreischer's podcast. He goes on Adam Carolla all the time. And like, this is a dude who's just a podcaster, like through and through he's a podcaster. He didn't have a business before. He wasn't doing anything different or special or unique. He built a platform. It became a super, super valuable platform to be on. And that allows him to connect with a bunch of people. So does that make sense? Yep. Like your, your network will always increase in direct proportion to the platform that you have or to the value that you can add and having a big platform is a huge value add. And the same, same with Cole, like Cole's, Cole's a great real estate investor, but like he's not doing 300 homes a year, you know, but he built an insanely good platform through his ability to like sell and speak from stage. And so now he's built thrive, which is an awesome platform and it adds value to really high level people. And that's how he's been able to connect and partner with people like Eric Thomas, who would have been totally off the radar had he not had a platform that added enough value to ET to come speak at it. Right. So lead with value in any transaction, any relationship, but in your reach out message, lead with value as well. And this can be something like as simple as a, like, um, a thank you for a piece of content maybe that they've shared or something that you've learned from their life or, you know, if they wrote a, a book or, you know, um, did, uh, you know, maybe they have an email newsletter and they wrote something in there one time that helps you shift a mindset, like whatever it is, like this is a really tiny value add. It's just something to say, Hey, I appreciate what you're doing. And I'm not just like reaching out to ask you something. It just softens the blow of the ask, if that makes sense. Um, so that you actually like know who they are first. Right. Cool. Hey, do business with me. I'm assuming, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and that's, and that's the most important part of the process because this isn't, this isn't something you can just mass email. That's the whole point is people want, people want like, well, like how do I, you know, it's a numbers game. How do I send a message to 200 people? If you do that, you're not going to get a good response rate. Like you, it needs to be that personalized message to where people can tell like, wow, this person actually put some thought, some thought into this. They've actually consumed some of my content. This is actually like, actually like affected their life how cool is that? You know what I mean? Like it's a totally different feel from that point going forward. So lead with value all the time, Just give them a good compliment. but you be genuine about the compliment, like whatever it is, don't make it up. Don't like, if you, like if people reach out to me and they've never listened to an episode of build your network, don't tell me how awesome my content is. Like don't make something up just to, just to, you know, getting good with somebody, but find something that you like, like, go to my Instagram and, and like, maybe, maybe you like how my Instagram feed is like, talk about that. 
you know, don't say something that's, that isn't true. People can see through that kind of stuff. So, you know, like if that's something that was cool, like, Hey bro, um, you know, I, I saw you, I see you have a podcast, but I also like, I, I love I geek out on Instagram feeds and I really love, you know, this last post that you did a really awesome job with that. Anyway, like whatever it is, just lead with some sort of value there at the beginning. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like days or weeks or months of research that you've done. Like if it's right. really, you've just recently come across yep. five minutes to get into them, you can find out a whole lot in five minutes, you know, totally. the, the internet and Google. Yep. Google them, check out their LinkedIn profile because they most likely have one if they're professional, if they're in some sort of podcasting space or if they're a speaker of sorts, they're going to have content out there. Mm -hmm. Spend five minutes just digging in. Yep. And you can easily find um, valuable, digestible content that you can refer to within five minutes. Yep. And five totally. minutes end on the 200 people that you're going to individualize um, emails to, yep. that's going to have such a higher return on investment than just a copy and paste Hey, first name, copy, love Steve. Right, right. Totally, 100%, man. So yeah, lead with value. Number two, give information. Um, this one I fumbled on when I first started. I, I gave way too much information. I, I was trying to convince people that I was worth connecting with, right? Um, but ultimately, what, what it does is just put a sea of black text in their inbox. And busy people don't like seeing seas of black text in their inbox. They want to roll through their inbox, right? Um, so... I did not get good response rates to that. So give information, but just to be as clear and concise as, and short as possible. So now, like instead of giving them a whole background on who I am, I just do like a quick, hey, I run a top business podcast called Build Your Network. It's all about, it's all about how to connect with people the right way. Um, and like, that's it. That's all I say. Um, but I hyperlink Build Your Network. I make sure that it's a different color of text um, because if they want to learn more about me, it goes to my website, TravisChapel.com, and they can read they can read for hours on all the stuff about me, right? Like you can go over there and learn, but if you don't put it in your message because um, see a sea of black text never gets a good response rate. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes for this entire email, by the way, or message, like try to keep it under 200 words, but if you can do it in 50 words, do it in 50. Like make, like make, yourself, like make yourself a Twitter challenge, like of what Twitter used to be, you know what I mean? Like just keep it as short as possible because the shorter the better on stuff like this. People, especially busy people don't like wasting their time. Um, and, uh, the only way that I would say that it's okay to write something really long is if you're giving like a really awesome testimonial for something that they've done, like that's different. Um, but if you're just like trying to pitch them on something, then that becomes annoying. So yeah. don't do that. Give information, but do it in a clear, concise way. Less um, is yeah, totally. So leave with value, give information. Number three, meaningful request. I make sure that I say meaningful request because I don't just want to put request because I'm going to have a bunch of dumb people out there that are going to be like, hey, can I pick your brain? And I have to raise my hand and say that I was one of those dumb people when I first started. And again, like this is me falling flat on my face and realizing like, oh, nobody responds well to that. Like, and still nobody responds well to that. So please save yourself some time and embarrassment and don't ask somebody if you can pick their brain. The only time that works is if that person's not busy. And do you really want to pick that person's brain? <laughs> you know, like, I, yeah, so just don't, don't ask if you can pick somebody's brain, like have a meaningful request built out. That's another huge reason to have a platform, a podcast, a meetup, a YouTube channel, something like that, because it provides the perfect ask there. It's such a meaningful request. It doesn't require a ton of their, um, their time, doesn't require any of their money or resources or knowledge or like any of those things. It's just as like, Hey, can I, can I, can I share your message to my audience? You know, and it's such, it's such an easy, meaningful request to build there. But if you don't have a show, whatever, then come up with something different. That's actually going to, I, I give some really good, I give some tips and advice on how to build a meaningful request in my, um, in my free training on this. Um, but, um, uh, you got to come up with something like, I don't like your industry, whatever you're doing is going to depend on like what your meaningful request is. Um, if you're in real estate investing, like it might be something along those lines of like, of, you know, examining a deal or helping them walk a property or offering some, you know, a connection to a good lender that you use, private money that you have. Like, I, I don't know what it is like, but you need to build some sort of a, a meaningful request and not just a, Hey, can I pick your brain or can we get a virtual cup of coffee over Skype sometime? Like it has to be something that really is beneficial for the other person, not just for you. Okay. So could it be as simple as, um, you know, somebody sees us at a meetup or, or comes across our, our content or sees us for this case and they send an email and it's like, you know, Hey, we'd love to connect. They did a little quick little intro piece on it, you know, for the, for this piece of it, it could be as simple as, you know, I'd love to 
talk about joint venture partnering, I'm having a challenge with this aspect of it. And I think you'd have the answer to it or is that too- yeah, I would keep it more like, um, not necessarily asking for their time on something like that, but more asking for like a resource. And again, this depends on the person and how busy they are. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I would, I would maybe even go for the smaller ask there and say like, do you have a resource on, on joint venture partnerships that, uh, that you can send me to? And that way it's more like, Oh yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I can send this guy a link, you know what I mean? Like I can send him a, a book that I read one time, but here's the most important part though. If they give you something, do it. Like if they send you a book, if they send you an article, if they send you a video, watch it, read it, listen to it, whatever it is, and write up like two or three of your main takeaways, send it back to them and say, hey, thanks so much for that recommendation. Here's some of my key takeaways. Do you have another recommendation for me? Mm -hmm. Like how much more impactful is that um, for somebody that's really busy with their time to like get something like that? Um, from somebody that's trying to reach out to them. If they actually did, like took their advice, learned something, and then they're asking for another recommendation. Oh, uh, you know, actually I wrote, I read this other book on this same thing, or I did this podcast interview one time. You want to check this one out. You know, like that's just a path to continue a conversation with somebody and in like really, really super informal mentorship capacity, but that might lead to actually getting like a real, you know, phone call with them later on down the road. Yeah. And is that always the game plan is like, you know, you want to start off slow or, or soft or, you know, go through these five steps to get to a phone call or an in-person meeting? Yeah, for sure. I mean, whatever, however you can, you know, further the relationship, whatever that means, in-person, phone call, whatever. Because um, I don't know what your goals are. Are you like, you know what I mean? Like you might be trying to raise money for a deal that you wrote an offer on last week and you need like, you know, two or $3 million in capital to secure this you know, loan or whatever, like that's obviously a little bit more urgent and you can't just wait six months to build a relationship before you want to ask for, you know, um, potential, uh, uh, investing in this fund. Um, but on that, I do think that it's like still going to be more beneficial if you do the long-term stuff, mm-hmm. like if you spend three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, just adding value, building good relationships, then like a decade from now, you want to raise two, three million bucks, you'll get it in a single phone call. You know what I mean? Like a, a Facebook post or a, a quick email, like you'll get people wanting to give you their money. So um, I'm just so long term about this stuff, man. Like yeah, people think so short term and it's mind blowing to me. Like I'm, I'm in the long game, you know, like you gotta, gotta think long term with, especially when it comes to relationships. And networking. So lead with value, give information or request number four, possibly most importantly, offer credibility. Um, So credibility is one of the biggest reasons that people connect with me because I've built a really good amount of credibility in my brand through connecting with some of the people that I've been able to connect with. And uh, so anytime I get a chance to like throw a few names in there, not in like a try to like braggy, arrogant way, but just simply in a way to be like, Hey, I'm somebody that you should take seriously because there's so many other people that reach out to these people all the time. So you want to give them a reason to treat you differently. So if their 10 good friends that they know all were like trusting enough in me to get on my podcast, then um, they probably are like, well, they probably did the research enough to know that this guy's good. So I don't need to do the work to know if this is worth my time. I'll just say yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So like your barrier to yes is, um, is much easier to overcome. Um, if you have a ton of credibility to throw into that, whatever that means for you, you might not be starting with a list of people. I wasn't starting with a list of people. I didn't know anybody when I started. Um, but start growing that list of people um, or figure out another way to throw in some credibility. Maybe it's, you know, um, uh, big recognizable brands or companies that are in the space that you're in. If you've done a deal with them or worked with them, or um, even if you just like heard about this person on that, like, so if you're reaching out to me and you're like, um, oh yeah, I heard about you on bigger pockets. Like that's a credibility thing. That means that like, I know that you were in real estate. It gives me a lot of information about you. Like, and even though like you haven't been on bigger pockets, like, but you still want to connect with me because I was on bigger pockets. Either way, the words bigger pockets in the actual message is something that draws my eyes, right? Like we have something called a reticular activating system and our subconscious is always searching for things that we're familiar with or recognize or things that have been top of mind for us recently. So if somebody sends me a message and it says bigger pockets in it, my eyes are going to immediately be drawn to that because it's a recognizable name that I've been following for years and years and years. So that's what I mean by credibility, whatever credibility you can throw in there. If it's just social proof, even if they're not recognizable names, like, Hey, yeah, you know, John Smith and, um, you know, Carol 
they they both bought this thing from me and or, or like they you know they're both good friends of mine they you know they uh, endorsed this package like whatever it is like provide a little bit of social proof there if you can get it like big name social proof that's when it becomes really true credibility um, but giving the idea that people in general like to work with you is never a bad idea so lead with value give information meaningful request offer credibility and then finish off with the thanks in advance. Um, the thanks in advance to me is just another thing that's going to help lower that barrier a little bit when people um, want to say yeah, uh, uh, no to you. So um, this is something I taught my door-to-door -door reps all the time when I was when I was training a lot in door-to-door, -door, which is basically whatever you can do to increase your percentage of getting a sale, do it. Like obviously nothing you know illegal or unethical or immoral or whatever, but um, but whatever it is, like if it gives you an extra half a percent, you know, like why not do it? If you do 12 of those things and you're in an extra 6% over the course of a year, that's a lot of extra income that you're making because you're doing a few extra things that most people just won't do. And this is that, that's the thanks in advance to me. It's not going to be the thing that increases your return, you know, 300% or your sponsor rate 300%, but will it increase by, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25%? Yeah, sure. And is that worth doing it? Yeah, hundred percent. Why not? So we put in the thanks in advance and basically all it does is just opens a psychological loop in that person's head that they really subconsciously want to close. Thanking somebody in advance for something that they have not done yet, like automatically makes them want to complete that loop for the most part. And so like if that, if they're on the edge, then psychologically, subconsciously, they might just lean over to the yes part because you thank them for doing something they haven't done yet. Um, and my dog Snowball, I was using it as an example for this, the one that was barking earlier. Um, she's like 150 pound Great Pyrenees um, Anatolian shepherd mix. And she's like the dopiest, biggest, lovable dog. Um, but she's just kind of, kind of, kind of dumb. <laughs> and, uh, but she's like the cutest thing ever. And so when she's laying on her bed and I walk by, what she'll do is she'll like, she'll like keep her head down. She won't even move her head. She'll look up and make eye contact with me. Um, and, uh, when she makes eye contact with me, she starts wagging her tail and I don't like having dirty hands. And since she's so filthy, every time I pet her, I feel like I have to wash my hands afterwards. And uh, so like if, if I'm walking around, I, I have zero intention of leaning down and petting her, but I catch I'm, uh, eye contact with her and she starts wagging her tail. I literally feel like almost guilty on the inside because like, ah, oh, she's so happy right now. And if I don't pet her, she's going to be so sad. Like it, like it makes me feel bad for doing something, for not doing something that she's already like, quote unquote, thanking me for doing right? That's what the wagging of the tail is. She's hoping that I'm going to lean down and pet her because I got really close. So he's probably going to come over and pet me. So I'm going to start wagging my tail, right? So like when I walk by and her tail stops wagging, I feel like a jerk because like, ah, oh, I could have made her happy, but I didn't. Right? So like, it's just a perfect example of what I mean by the thanks in advance thing. Like it just gets people, it gets people to almost feel bad if they don't do the thing that you've already thanked them for because you've already thanked them for doing it. So why wouldn't they just go ahead and do it? You know what I mean? Especially if it's like a small thing, like a quick resource or a book recommendation or something like that. You know what I mean? Like why, if it, it, it takes them less than 30 seconds, like and you've already thanked them in advance for it, why not just go ahead and do it? So there's the five bro. Lead with value, give information, meaningful request, offer credibility and thanks in advance. Yeah, man. So valuable. Uh, I hope everybody was taking notes. If you weren't, I'll summarize that. Um, and send it to anybody who wants it, just, uh, I don't know, DM me or give me a shout or something like that. Um, or post it in the show notes. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the environment in which we first met <clears throat> and no, it wasn't a first date. <laughs> um, we first met at a mastermind Yeah, and it was thrive, um, down in Vegas. I think it actually was. Yep. Yep. And, um, you know, for, for me, Thrive and just masterminds in general, but um, ha has really changed my life. It mm -hmm. has helped me in business, you know, probably 3 X star business in the first year. Um, but I've gotten an even higher return on just my personal self. The, the challenges that they put in front of you, the personal growth that, that you go through through masterminds, you know, the network that you, that you get out of it. Um, that continue to support you and push you because they're all there. Everybody who's at a mastermind is all for there for the same reason to support each other and to, to learn all the same topic that everybody else is there for. So you have already common ground. Um, you know, so shout out to, to Cole and Sonia, um, all the Hatters and all, all their staff for the incredible work that they've done um, and continue to do. You know, making money matter is, is incredible. And the for purpose aspect of it um, really spoke to our hearts. Um, that's 
pretty much the main reason I'm, you know, I wanted to go. Uh, Randy gave me a shout and said, Hey, we're joining this mastermind. I was like, what's it about? And he's like, making money matter. I was like, Oh, that sounds cool. Let's go. <laughs> and, um, and since then we've integrated, you know, for purpose into, uh, into our business models and for our meetup, um, you know, we charge at the door. Um, I think it's 10 bucks for two people to come, but hundred percent of that $10 goes back to, you know, our local favorite charity, which is kids Sport Victoria, helping kids who can't financially get into sports, um, get them off the sidelines and actually playing. Um, so, you know, being a part of masterminds has really elevated me as a person and elevated our business. What has masterminds done for you over the past couple of years? That's a direct source of connections, man. Like, I don't, I don't think people understand, or yeah, I just don't think people understand like how, like, un, like disconnected I was a couple of years ago. Like, I just didn't know anybody doing anything cool, honestly. Like, I, I grew up in a, like I said, a really small religious bubble. When I got out of that, like, not a lot of those people were still friends of mine, you know. So, um, I, I was starting from scratch, you know. I, I didn't have like. A buddy from college whose dad was a millionaire like I wasn't hanging out at the country club on the weekends you know what I mean like I was starting from scratch zero connections the most the most the richest person I knew was making hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year I never even met a millionaire let alone like had a friendship or like relationship with one so um, for me it's just the community the connections like getting to know people like you and Randy and um, some of the other uh, awesome people that are that are from Thrive that um, have similar mindset because I just like nobody that I knew had a similar mindset to me. I was completely isolated in, in that in that world. Like I, I knew that I wanted to do other things. I knew that I had like ambitions and goals and dreams, but nobody that I knew like cared to talk about any of the things that I cared to talk about. And it like is a is a really lonely feeling sometimes when um, when you feel like you're the odd man out. In, and 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 like, don't get me wrong, like I love. Um, I love my, my, my really close friends. Like these guys are guys that I've known since I was three years old. You know what I mean? Like they're brothers on, on all, they'll, they'll be part of my life forever. But like, you know, like we just don't, we don't vibe with the same things. Some like all the time, you know what I mean? Like I want to talk about personal development and like growth and all these other things. And, uh, like, that's just not something that they're interested in. And like, I, I honestly, I don't fault people for that. I really don't like, it's not, I don't look down on people. Like it's just different. It's just different desires. Right. So for me, it was like a desperation to find people who were like me, find people that were a bunch of crazies, you know, like, like I was like people who didn't follow the status quo, who wanted more, who, who, um, had bigger goals and dreams and stuff. And so for me, it was really all about connecting with, with other people. And that's what it's allowed me to do for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And I think, you know, a bit of the just of that is, you know, you are the average of the five people you spend the most amount of time with. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a real estate investor, go surround yourself with real estate investors. And even if you know squat all, like couldn't pick a house from a barn, you know, if you um, grow your, your, your social research uh, into real estate investing, you're just going to naturally elevate. Yeah. You miss any other topic. If it's just business as a whole, entrepreneurship, you know, being a, a seven figure father, right? Um, just surround yourself with people who are, doing that and you'll naturally just organically pick up different pieces from them language tips and then you can start a conversation around it be like oh you know what's an arv kind of thing and then you know the person who mentioned it will go oh after a pair value is blah 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 blah, blah. um so yeah that's an appropriate summary yeah for sure 100 percent um yeah you know masterminds are a ton of fun um you get a lot of personal growth out of it. a lot of times you get a great network, great content, uh, and you can build, you know, lifelong friendships. hundred percent, bro. Yep. Totally. Um, so I think as we wind down here, um, I want to appreciate you for your time. Uh, I know you're a busy guy. You got a family, you got dogs, you got a business to run, you get content to create, you got rock stars to interview, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, for, for people watching, what's the best way for them to connect with you, to listen to the podcast, to learn more about the events, just to learn more about who Travis Chapel is and, and you know, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, best way to connect with me is just TravisChapel.com. Um, you can find basically everything that I do over there. Uh, and then I uh, would love to see you at my live event. That's my biggest, my biggest thing right now. So um, if connection with other people of, that are like-minded is important to you, then I, I can't, I'm not going to make any guarantees and put my foot in my mouth, but 
I am, I, I can guarantee this, that I will do my best to make it the best connection event that you've ever been to. So that's my, that's my promise. Yeah, that's awesome. And if it's anything close to the Thailand trip, I know it's going to be just an absolute home run. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cool. So check out his website, check out uh, Build Your Network podcasts. I know you got a bunch of free resources on there. Um, you know, take advantage of those. Um, and yeah, dude, you know, it's been a pleasure. Uh, how's it been like been on the other side of the interviewing? Oh, it's cool, man. I, I, I would way rather be interviewed than interview. So <laughs> it's a lot less work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for cool. sure. Cool. Well, uh, thanks again for being here, dude. Uh, I know we do. We brought a lot of value in this call. Um, people are going to absolutely love this. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Hope you have just a kick-ass day um, and rest of your week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you down in Vegas in November. And then we'll actually see you in August at the next, uh, next connect. Um, Sounds good, bro. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.